Hello everyone. Uh, let's start this um, video lecture. In this lecture, you are going to learn about inductors. And uh, let me connect this with this uh, with the chapter that you have already gone through. This electrostatic. In electrostatic, you have understood the device for the capacitor. So inductor is basically similar device as the capacitor is in electrostatic. And this inductor is similar in magnetic uh, part of this. Physics. So, uh, capacitor uh, used to be a arrangement. You remember uh, that two conductors, if you place, and uh, if you give them equal and opposite charges, then this becomes an arrangement called capacitance. This capacitance uh, entirely dependent on this geometry, spacing, medium, and all that thing. It does not depend on the charge and all that. Moreover, uh, this came in this way: like Q is proportional to V more the charge you place in, more the potential difference is going to be created. And then uh, the proportionality uh, symbol was removed by this C. So this became the equation and this equation became the basic equation. Then based on this, we calculated the energy stored and all other stuff related to the capacitor. Almost very similar to this, you are going to find in case of inductors. So what an inductor is we can define this inductor is uh, any coil any coil uh, or combination of coils so there may be one coil or more than one coils and that arrangement will be known as uh, this inductor now not only this coil but this coil carrying current it can be in circular form it can be on any shape let's say like this so if you have this conducting coil and having current in it, this arrangement is called inductor. This is also called inductor. If you consider the two together, that's also called an inductor. So inductor is basically an arrangement of current carrying loop or loops, you can call that. And uh, similarly, if you, are, if you are using one loop or maybe the combination of loop, so you might be interested in calculating the flux. So uh, flux, you know, flux depends on magnetic field and the area that you consider. So ideally, it goes like B dot DA. That means we can say uh, in uh, some sense that this flux is proportional to the magnetic field. The more the magnetic field that you are creating, more the flux is going to pass through given any area. If that uh, area is uh, not perpendicular to that magnetic field right so uh, point is this is going to be directly proportional but we also know that the magnetic field is directly related with the current that means more the current you run through more the magnetic field you're going to create and if you combine these two together then you're going to find some sort of this the flux passing through a coil is going to be directly proportional to the current carrying uh, is directly proportional to the current on the current carrying element or, or uh, arrangement whatever that arrangement is now if you remove this proportionality symbol then this can be removed in two ways uh, or we can say there's going to be some constant of proportionality that is going to come in we use it like uh, phi is equal to l into i this we use when there is a single coil single coil or we can write it as uh, phi is equal to mi when there is a pair of coils pair of coils or you can say when there is a two loops or an arrangement having two so uh, generally we are going to use this l for the self and this m is used for the mutual so these are the two types basically inductors one is called self inductor another is called mutual inductors so here l is going to be known as inductance and that inductance will be self inductance just like uh, here you used to call this c as a capacitance of this capacitor similarly this l is going to be called as a self inductance this M that is written over here, this M is also called inductance, but this is called mutual inductance. Why mutual? Because 
this is for pair of uh, coils and you are going to study this much more in detail so uh, we will use phi equal to li for the self coil single coil or fi is equal to mi for the mutual or pair of coils so that's called mutual inductance right both are inductance both are going to talk about that arrangement and both are independent of the phi and the current that means l and m just like the capacitance they depends on the arrangement so what the l of one coil is going to be or what the m of a pair of coils is going to be they all depend on the size the shape and the arrangement or medium you can call medium in between so that means they depends on the geometry and all that stuff they are not dependent on these flux neither on the field neither on the current makes sense and uh, the unit for them unit for them is capital h we write it as a capital h it is called henry so henry is their as a unit so that's a unit so just like here you used to have a farad so there's a henry uh, that's a unit they are dependent on the arrangement moreover uh, this is these are the constant of this thing so whenever you need to calculate uh, mutual inductance or, or self inductance what we need to do we need to find the this relation and uh, then we need to see what the proportionality constant is coming whatever is coming that becomes self or mutual inductance let's understand uh, these two types of uh, inductance so uh, let's say there is a coil and in this coil this is going on now if you uh, increase this current or change this current then something is going to happen so first of all you uh, if you are interested in finding the flux so you can write the flux uh, linked to the same coil because of the current i so that can be calculated using this b dot da and you know uh, if we talk out in uh, rough sense then you'll find this uh, field uh, at this uh, center is going to be known exactly but this field will be existing at all the locations and that's going to be into the is this uh, surface right and uh, that means this flux will also be dependent on i because of it depends on b and uh, as i changes now let's say if i changes so let's say uh, this i'm writing over here if i is increased now as soon as you change this i then you'll find uh, as a consequence b is going to increase b increases as b increases you'll find flux in nut cell is going to increase whenever the flux increases then you know there is a faraday law and Faraday law says that there is going to be induced current. So immediately there is going to be induced current coming in. Induced current will be set up. Now this induced current that is going to come in, that induced current that you are going to get it, is going to be uh, the, having a direction that will oppose this increase in flux. That means induced current is going to run opposite to this so you will find this kind of uh, an induced current will starts moving this is the original current and this is the induced current let's induce current is uh, i n small n n for induced let's say so you'll find the net current will be uh, not the one that you have increased but it is going to oppose that increase so it's going to be lesser than that right. so point is uh, if you understand what is going on that means if you increase the current then something happens so that an induced current sets up which opposes the increase in the current that means this is coming to oppose this opposes increase in current that means change in current change in current now same thing will happen if you decrease it in case you decrease the current then you'll find magnetic field will decrease hence flux will decrease hence again induced current will come and that induced current will be in the same direction as the uh, original current is that means induced current will again oppose the change in so the change in current is always opposed in a circuit now this becomes very important law or rule and so what we can conclude is this 
uh, we can say whenever we change current in any loop or in any circuit for that matter then uh, the circuit and the loop you can say that opposes that change in current this property is known as self inductance so we can define the self inductance in such manner as well it is the property of a circuit it is a property of every circuit so we write it is property of a circuit that due to which due to which the circuit opposes any change in its current any change in its current this property is known as self inductance so what is a self inductance it is the property of a circuit that itself that means that circuit itself opposes what it opposes any change if you want to change the current that will be opposed by that circuit just like this this loop that you can see over here is basically a circuit because this is a conductor so it must be having some resistance right and it's an inductor so it having it's it's going to have this inductor inductor is indicated by l so it's, it's a symbol of inductor is this we are going to talk about in detail it is written by l if it is a self the resistance because every loop or every conductor has a resistance and every loop has an inductor so that means this is basically a lr circuit in which a resistance and an inductor is connected though they are not visible in this loop but they are there so that's equivalent circuit you can call and in this equivalent circuit that means if you change this current i this circuit will oppose that change in current this opposition is coming because of this property and this property is known as self inductance you can also connect this uh, concept with the concept that you have learned in mechanics called inertia you remember inertia what that inertia uh, used to do that means it used to oppose the change in the uh, situation or the motion of any object that means if an object is at rest it would like to be at rest if it is moving it would like to be moving that means if you bring any change to its state it is being opposed exactly same way circuit behaves that means if any current is set up in that circuit the circuit would like to carry with that current if you change that current it is going to oppose whether you are increasing it then it's also going to oppose if you are decreasing it it's also going to be opposed this is very inbuilt property of all the circuits and this inbuilt property is known as uh, inductance and if it is occurring for the same circuit so that's called self inductance and that is written by l so l indicates that inbuilt properties the property of a circuit exactly similar you remember this i inertia moment of inertia used to represent rotational inertia or mass represent uh, translational inertia similarly l represent self inductance of any circuit and the symbol for self inductance uh, and uh, or this inductor is this it's like a spring and uh, we will talk about that uh, if this current i is running over here so if this current is passing through this you can write it as a terminal a you can write it as a terminal b so there is going to be uh, potential difference across a and b its role will be only when there is a change in the current because we are talking about change in the current so va minus vb will be written as ldi by dd now you'll find if current is a constant that means no change in the current then you'll find this will make no difference because di by dt will become zero so potential difference will become zero it will be just like a wire but its role will be there if current changes hence it will bring potential difference and it will bring opposition battery and this opposition battery will be creating that induced current so that 
the the induced current that you have learned over here right so this l will be indicating and involving uh, this induced current in itself and finding finding out final current in that circuit Right. So here you have understood the inductance as a property of a circuit that opposes any change in the, its current and it is occurring in the same circuit because of the current in the same circuit, hence it's called self-inductance. How we are going to calculate that self-inductance? Idea we have just talked earlier as well. So uh, the idea would be you need to simplify and find the flux. Once you have found the flux through the same loop, then you say this flux is going to be directly proportional to current and whatever is coming uh, with that in this bracket as a constant that will become inductance just like uh, in capacitor we used to find q is equal to uh, something into v then something becomes the capacitance similarly inductance can be calculated so let me take one example for self-inductance how we can calculate self-inductance of a given arrangement and in examination, you will find the questions in which you need to calculate the self-inductance of various uh, arrangements of coils. So let's say example says uh, find self-inductance of long solenoid. And uh, you have been given, what have been given is this, uh, I is a current, I is a current in each loop that you know, N is the number of turns per unit length, so this is uh, number of turns per unit length, I'm writing in short, capital N is in total number of turns, L is, given. And L is a length, L is also given and n is also given small n is can be calculated using these two and uh, moreover you have been given this uh, radius r is a radius this information is given to us and we are supposed to find self inductance of that long solenoid so let's try to find out uh, or learn the idea how to find that self inductance in any arrangement so this example uh, will give you a formula as well as an idea to find the self-inductance of any arrangement. So we will draw a picture, maybe a rough one. And let's say this is a solenoid. So this will be having uh, this kind of uh, wiring uh, all over. And it's so long, that means it is having large length. Here length is also given to us. So uh, let's say this is this solenoid, right? Radius means the radius of this uh, solenoid. Current means the current in each loop. So let's say this is I current that flows in. So I current will be running in all of it. Let me show by this. And the radius means this is the radius, you know. And length is this dimension these numbers are given to us we need to find self inductance so uh, first of all we need to find the flux through this solenoid because of the current in that solenoid so solution will be like this flux let's say that flux is phi and this is a thing this is basically a coil having so many turns and uh, flux will be equal to uh, this field into area we start like this but you find that in long solenoid magnetic field is uniform and uh, in this way you will find the magnetic field will exist like this and that will be uniform and what is that formula you must be remembering is mu naught into n into i where n is the number of turns per unit length i is the current in each turn right so that is the magnetic field since it's a uniform whenever there is a uniform so you write it as a total number of turns b into a can you write directly uh, just we can write it and uh, area that we are considering is this area so area is going to be pi r square you can clearly see from there pi r square now why why this capital n i have been uh, capital n has been uh, 
multiplied with because BA is going to be flux through each loop. And how many loops are there? N number of loops. So that will become the total flux. Total flux through this because there is N number of turns. Yes, you know that. And uh, if you know that, then uh, we can put the value of B and I and then we can find what this phi is. So phi is N. Now if you want, you can write this N from here in terms of small n and L. So this can be written as small n and L where L is the length of it is. Length may be large enough. And uh, in place of B, you will write mu naught N into I. In place of A, you are going to write as a pi R square. Now, if you rewrite it, you are going to find some sort of this mu naught n square pi r square into l. So mu naught n square l pi r square, they are all constant and into i. Now you see this, uh, whatever written in this bracket, all terms depends on this arrangement. They do not depend on the current, neither on the magnetic field, nor, neither on any other thing. R is the part of the geometry, L is the part of geometry, N is the part of arrangement, mu naught is a medium, so it also depends on medium. Now you can compare this phi is equal to Li. As soon as you compare, you will find the expression for L that is a self-inductance. It will become mu naught pi R square N square into L. So this is a kind of formula as well for you for a long solenoid the formula for self inductance is this much and how we have calculated idea was simple you calculated the flux then you simplified it and for ultimately found this flux is directly proportional to the current so whatever the proportionality sim constant is that becomes the l value right. and you need to remember this as a result so that if at all any question is being asked you can answer it like uh, they will be asking what happens to self inductance if the current is doubled so if you current if you double the current there will be no change in l because l does not depend on the current it's it's part of the geometry arrangement and everything then they will ask like what happens if you uh, make the radius double so if you increase the radius uh, by two factor then you'll find it depends on the radius as r square so it will grow by four factor Similarly, it may be asked like what happens when we reduce its length to half. So it also depends on L. It also depends on the number of turns per unit length. So you need to take care of everything to, to answer that these type of questions. Okay. So that's the idea about self-inductance and its calculation. Now let's talk about the second type of inductance that's called mutual inductance. So let's take uh, with that with that. Mm, example or with this help of this example let's say there is one coil and parallel to this there is another coil these two coils are placed uh, to make an arrangement and let's say this is indicating the back side of it and this is also indicating the back side of this coil and let's say uh, we have named them this is a coil number one this is a coil number two they can have a number of turns as well n1 and n2 and all that Let's say this is uh, having a current I1. So you are running the current uh, in first coil. If you run the current in the first coil, then you'll find flux will be linked from the second coil due to the current in the first coil. Because you know, because of this uh, first uh, coil current, there is going to be magnetic field existing. And this, these are going to be the magnetic field lines. You'll, you will find many of the magnetic field lines will pass through the second coil isn't it and similarly they will be passing um, going this side I'm, I'm drawing this rough picture but uh, this certainly says that uh, second coil is in the magnetic field of the first coil and if we change this i or i1 so let's say if we increase this i1 then you'll find the flux that will pass through this area will increase because the magnetic field strength increases then the field lines becomes more stronger that means density increases so more flux will increase that means there is going to be increase in the flux through the second coil so point is if you uh, have a current in one coil then there will be flux linked in the second coil because of the current in the first coil so we will write the flux 
linked with call to due to current in call one due to current in coil one this can be otherwise as well that means if you run a current in the second then the flux will be linked on the first coil so we are taking just one example right we can write it as a this is a flux of uh, two due to the current in one this flux will be directly proportional to the current in one can you think of if we increase this current the flux will increase because magnetic field is increasing so this flux of two due to current in one is going to directly proportional to the current in one if you want to remove this proportionality symbol then we need to bring a constant of proportionality that constant of proportionality written as m and you can write it as m for two due to one and this is going to be i1 so here uh, again we can find the flux through two because of the current in one and then see uh, what the relation is coming whatever this constant is coming that will become mutual inductance this could also have been done in other way round if you do other way round that means if you run the current uh, in the second and find the flux in the first so you can write as a flux through one coil due to current in the second it's going to be proportional to the current in the second and if you uh, remove this proportionality symbol then you need to bring a m which is going to be of 1 and 2 and it's going to be i2 so either you want to solve in the above way or you want to solve in the both way and you can solve it and in both case whatever this m is coming that's that's equal that's the same so basically from here you can claim one thing that means m that is a mutual inductance it is same as m21 which is also same as m12 that means if we need to find what the mutual inductance of this arrangement is we can start by taking current in any of them and find the flux from the other one so if we take the current in the first find the flux from the two whatever this is going to come that will be known as mutual inductance of this arrangement similarly if we start from here and find the flux from this whatever we are going to get this and that's called mutual inductance that means mutual inductance is of this arrangement it does not depend from where we are measuring the current and from where we are measuring the flux so this also validate that this is for the arrangement that has been given to you right moreover you can find uh, what happens over here if you increase this current then you'll find this flux is going to increase if the flux increases then you'll find there is going to be current coming in this will be the current induced current in the second so you might be asked in which, di in which direction the induced current is going to flow because you know if you are increasing it so this flux is increasing and if this flux is increasing so induced current will be coming like uh, so that the flux will be there so current must be uh, in this uh, current will be in this manner the manner i have shown earlier so that means you can use your lenz law and faraday's law to find it and if you need to find the mutual inductance you simply start from the current from one find the flux on the second make the relation and this is how you can find the mutual inductance of that arrangement moreover this mutual inductance that we have talked about it depends on this arrangement and everything it also depends upon orientation orientation means what uh, if in this particular case you have seen that this these are the field lines Since these are the field lines then you'll find if the more this is the related to the flux linkages if the more flux is linked if the more flux is linked that means m is higher if the less flux flux is linked then m is lower m is lower so uh, let's say in the same scenario uh, let's say there is another coil uh, or let, let me make another picture this is uh, one coil just like this one we had and uh, there is another coil which you have placed like this and here uh, for this arrangement uh, you can calculate the mutual inductance similarly for this arrangement you can also uh, you can uh, calculate this mutual inductance you might be asked in which arrangement you will find more mutual inductance value so what i'm trying to explain is that mutual inductance depends on orientation 
this is a one coil this is a second coil the same coil but you have changed the orientation since you have changed the orientation then m will change now let's say this for this process it is m1 for uh, let's say call this m let's say for this process or this arrangement it is m dash you might be asked to compare between m and m dash so how to compare for that sake you need to see the flux linkages if there is more flux linkages that means arrangement is effective for mutual inductance if the less flux linkages is there then you'll find that is uh, poor in terms of mutual inductance right now here you'll find this i will have more field lines passing through this area whereas if you draw the field lines for the case that we have shown over here field lines will pass like this isn't it they will be bending of course like this so field lines will remain the same as there was earlier but you'll find this area will be having very few field lines crossing this crossing this and if it is flat and no field line crossing that means you can say this flux linkage is zero then m dash will be tending to zero and if it is bent at certain angle so you can clearly see that this will have a less flux whereas this will have a more flux linkages that means flux is linking the two in large amount so if it is in large amount then the m becomes more so from here we can conclude that if these kind of two pictures are there so m will be more as compared to m base what i'm trying to explain is this it may be the case that you can be given uh, various uh, arrangements and you might be asked find the mutual inductance so instead uh, and and there's no details are given so you cannot find these things but qualitatively you can compare in qualitative comparison you need to see the flux linkages between the two coils more the flux linkages more the uh, this mutual inductance how I'm able to say that you see there is a formula this works phi is equal to m into i right so we are just using this and uh, let's say we are giving i same for the two cases if we are giving same phi then you can same i value then you can say more the flux more the m so if more flux is connected more mutual inductance is going to be just like here we gave same current i1 and we found more flux in this case hence m value was greater i hope you got this point and this is for mutual inductance so this this example uh, that i compared over here in these two arrangement was qualitative let's take one example in which we will be doing the calculation and finding this relation or this sort of relation then out of this calculating this m value let's take one example so here is an example this picture what this picture says let me explain uh, there are two long uh, coaxial solenoids. So it says find mutual inductance of two long coaxial solenoids. Rest of the details, rest of the details are given in the picture. So this blue color is, let's call this is one. And then this red color is numbered as a two. So there are two solenoids. And both are having uh, same length. So let's say L is given to us. So L is same for the two. And what else is given to us? Uh, that means radius. Uh, one has a radius R1, another has a radius R2. They are coaxial, so they share the same axis and um, number of turns let's say uh, n1 is the number of turns for the first n2 is the number of turns for the second so uh, these are the number of turns that is given to us l is given to us r1 and r2 is given to us so these are the information related to the geometry and arrangement we need to find the mutual inductance so we will go by the rule that rule we have just understood and we are going to apply that rule in order to find the mutual inductance, what do you need to do? You need to start the current in one of the coil. There are two coils. This upper solenoid is one coil, lower solenoid is another coil. So there are two coils. You need to start current in one coil, measure the flux on the another. So you can start current in any of them. So let's say um, I start the current on this uh, 
one part. So let's say one solenoid has a current. Or you can start in any way, choice is yours. And let's say that one solenoid has a current I1. I1. And this is current that is passing through in this first solenoid. So we need to find the flux through the second solenoid. And then we need to say this flux is going to be proportional to I1. Whatever this number is going to come, that will become the mutual inductance. You can also work otherwise. That means you start the current in the second and measure the flux through the first. So let me write here flux through second solenoid due to current in first solenoid. Current I1 in first solenoid. So uh, let's try to name this, uh, measure this, which is phi two. So phi two will be dependent since field uh, field inside because of the first whatever the field is going to come, you know this field is going to be uniform. B is going to be uniform. So since it's a uniform, so that will be field because of one, and area of the two, and then this is the flux through one loop of this inner one. This has to be multiplied by n two. N2 means the number of turns of the total turns of the second. Now this has to be understood. What I have written, we are writing the flux passing through the second solenoid. So second solenoid will have a flux because of the field of first solenoid. So we need to use the magnetic field of the first solenoid. And it has to be multiplied with the loop area of a solenoid which is second one so this will become the flux passing through single loop of the inner solenoid or the second solenoid then we need to find the total flux so total flux will require how many these types of areas are that means how many loops are in the second solenoid if you've got it then it's almost done how much this b1 is b1 is the magnetic field which is uniform and it will be mu naught n1 into i1 mu n i that you apply what is this area a2 that means loop area of one loop of a2 this is circular and radius r2 so that will become pi into r2 square how many turns are there in a second you can write it as it's n2 into l because n2 is the number of turns per unit length, L is the total length, so this will give us the total number of turns in the second solenoid. And you can put these values back on this. Once you put all these values, then you'll find it's going to be mu naught n1 i1 into area which is pi r2 square, pi into r2 square. Then N2, N2 is a small N2 into L. If you rearrange this, so you're going to get mu naught pi R2 square and N1, N2 into L. These are all properties of this arrangement into I1. So you got to know this flux 2 is directly proportional to current N1. Now you can compare this with this m into i1 from here you can find the value of mutual inductance of this arrangement so the mutual inductance of this arrangement of the two concept coaxial solenoid is going to be mu naught pi r2 square n1 n2 into l L is the length so it also requires the length so this also going to act as a result or formula you can remember this as a formula and how it is coming, you have seen, I have considered the current in the first and measured the flux through the second and then simplified this, got this as our answer. Now you can try the same question as a homework. You need to try the same question as a homework and try to prove the same M value by considering current in the second. So take the current I2 in the second solenoid or coil, measure the flux through the first one uh, by measuring the flux in the from the first you will find some phi 1 it should be equal to some m times i uh, i2 and then check whether this m is coming the same amount as you have calculated this 
once you check it then you'll find it will not matter from which coil we take the current and from which we measure the flux ultimately mutual inductance will remain the same because it's a, it's a property of that arrangement so that's called mutual inductance okay so uh, let's keep up to this point and uh, there will be questions on mutual inductance there can be so many questions so what do you need to do uh, simply uh, find the flux uh, to another coil because some current in the first coil or one coil and then find this kind of relation and whatever this proportionality symbol is coming that becomes the mutual inductance so uh, in this video we talked about the, what the inductor is it's a coil arrangement of coil maybe single maybe multi pair if it is single then it's called uh, self inductance and if it is a pair then it's called mutual inductance then you have understood that self inductance is the property of any circuit that opposes the change in the current similarly mutual inductance is the property of two circuits placed close by if the current of one circuit is changed then you'll find the current in the another circuit is going to come in or you can say uh, this this mutual inductance and there were two examples that we took in which we calculated the mutual inductance as well as the self inductance so make your proper notes and in the next video we will be using these inductors in much more detailed manner okay so thank you everyone have a great time